All right, boys, we've got a great episode with Michael Rubin. Before we get into this, Super Bowl this weekend, boys, which means absolute Asian weekend firing. I'm gonna be going with Prize Picks. You guys know the drill. Prize Picks is the best app to use when firing on sports. Prize Picks is different because instead of betting on teams, you're betting on individual players. So each player has a set projection and you either choose more or less than that set projection. So if you know which players are gonna perform this weekend at the Super Bowl, download Prize Picks. Trust me, this is the app for you. It's available in 70% of the United States, Texas, Cali, Florida. Also boys, take advantage of Code Nelk this weekend. It's a 100% deposit bonus. If you put in a hundred bucks, bang, you're gonna match another hundred bucks. Three hundred dollars, boys. Use code now. Download Prize Picks. Super Bowl weekend, baby. Let's go. This crib's nice. It's massive. All right, we're at Michael Rubin's crib. Took so long to get here, man. Get done. Hey, how are you? Good. Ryan, nice to meet you. What's up? Well, well, well. Put your shirts on backwards. No, is it? Yep. Got you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is this his crib? Hey, you might be renting it. No, he's not renting this crib. Yeah, baby. You sound like a hater. That's like, not a hater. Check this crib out. Look at the view. Huge pool. LA all the way down there. This might be the craziest crib I've been in. What's up, bro? This, so is, good, uh, guys. this is the craziest house I've, I've, I think I've ever been in. This is crazy. This is so we're at Michael Rubin's house. We got Michael Rubin on today. Yeah. Um, you guys don't know him. He's basically just a very, very, very successful business guy. He owns Fanatics, yeah. which they have the rights to pretty jerseys. much every, like jerseys. NFL, right? NBA, I think all, all major leagues. Yeah, literally all of them. So basically any sports like memorabilia that you buy is like basically through him. run by Fanatics? Yeah, you go to Fanatics site. He yeah. has everything. He owns NBA stores. Cool. He owns. Uh, Unless you get the fake ones, you probably have that. Well, you get the bullshit ones, of course. <laughs> you know. But this is, I mean, it's the guy. It's These cool. ones are cool, too. Besides, I mean, uh, the internals we love to do, but it's always cool to just sit down with a successful yeah. fucking business person. You just get to ask questions, you get to learn from yeah. them. It's inspiring. I'm right? excited, man. Four CEOs. Dude. Didn't you. Uh, Wait, what? Episode. Four CEOs? Yeah. Two, three. Interim. I'm interim three. CEO when he's out. Yeah, but like a. Three. Right now, I guess three. No, nah, it's sick though. Yeah, Are you saying what? <laughs> no, I was gonna say you hit him up. Did he, did he leave you on red or? No, I I didn't have his. I had his old number. Oh okay. Oh, like you just his boy. I met him a few times. Oh, he so you're front like you set this up? No, I didn't set this up. Oh, I heard Grubman. Set I guess this up. yeah. Shout out Sammy, to Dave. Shout Sammy out to Shahidi Dave. Set it up. I thought no. No, shout out to Dave. Oh. Dave Grubman set yeah, this up Dave for Grubman. us. So <clears throat> shout out to Dave. It's our guy. It's cool. What's what's new though? Before Ruben comes, anything new? Bro, I mean. <sighs> Oh, what? What? <laughs> no, Who gives that smile? We got like our pod's going me. out today, too? Yeah, our pod's going out today, me and you. Great. What's the title? It was like two hours. I don't know yet. That's the thing. I got to figure your, it out. Your titles are so different, though. It's just like one line. Should just yeah. be, it should right? be Raw Gear, Full Send Collab. We talk all things Raw Gear, Full Send no, Collab. No, we didn't, though. It was at the end of it. We did talk about it. That's the thing we're going to do, but that was at the end of it. That's going to be crazy. That title, Jesse will be in the thumbnail, Kyle, no, you that, in the middle. I think that pod's going to do really well. We talked for like two hours. You sh you shared a lot. I liked it. It was really yeah. good. I listened to it back. It was I don't, sick. Yeah. I don't know what I'm like. This is you guys run this pod one. This one? Yeah. I got this. I think this one. I want to just really. I want to get his whole story too, like how he yeah. started, right? Yeah. I got. I have everything. I got this. What time did you get here, by the way? We're supposed to be here. What? I was at nine. Nine. When did you take a dip so in the you pool? You got here real early. Nine, yeah, we, nine ten, you got here like fifty got, minutes early. I, I hit saw the sauna. There's a video of you dipping cardio. in the. You were just swimming laps, fucking. Yeah, I did a sauna, cardio. I'm like, there's a gym downstairs, there's a steam room. You were in. Yeah, honestly, Lift. I feel great. I like that. Yeah, we did a whole nother podcast. The thing about it is, no one's gonna tell you like, yo, what are you doing here? No, everyone's really sweet. He's got like all these like like nice. Like, Chef made you core. breakfast or what? Yeah, full like five course little breakfast. Yeah, it's just, like one of those houses where you walk in. There's like five different people doing different exactly. Shit. Yeah. That's how you got to do it, though, if you have this house. You should ask him about this crib in general. This I have some fucked. details, but I mean, I what do you got? Why? Him. You already looked at probably 100 M's. 70. Oh, oh, 70? 70. Holy fuck. I thought it'd yeah. be more. I'm excited for this one. You think we get an invite to one of his parties okay, after well, this? I, 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 got a I, got a I got something ready for that. I got something saving ready it? for that. Huh? You saving what, you've that? been there? You got rejected once. No, no, Don't no. Don't tell no. him how you did not get let in. No, 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 no. You can't even show up to that without like. An invite. You can't show up to that. I've you talking about one like I've the wine before. parties or something like that? I went to Fanatics, his last uh, last Super Bowl. It was in LA, right? Yeah. I went to the one It was in pretty crazy. 
DiCaprio is there. But the Fourth of July party is a party everyone wants to go to. Oh, is it? That's the one. Yeah. What at Nobu? Uh, no. He had it in the Hamptons, I think. Oh, guys, I left. It's good, bro. What up, man? How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. How's it going, bro? Kyle. What's going on? Great to meet you. Good to meet you, man. How you guys doing? Doing amazing. Well, bro, like, first off, thanks for letting us in your home. This is beautiful. Pleasure to have you guys. This crib is insane, bro. It could be worse. It could be a lot worse. It could definitely be worse. I've been to a lot of houses in LA, but I think this might be the nicest crib. Just like the natural lighting, the view. Shit's insane, bro. It's actually a little... I don't find peace very often, and it's definitely peaceful here, for sure. How long have you lived in this house? I have been here for about... Uh, when did I get it? I got it in September. I actually went, I decided that I'm here a lot more for business. Like, you know, we're in the sports and entertainment business. So, you know, basically it's like New York and LA. And um, I said, like, I need a place in LA. We do so, so much business here. And I came out and I looked at eight houses. And uh, this was actually the first, first house I walked into. It was actually a guy who owns the uh, Vancouver hockey team. Really? And um, yeah, small world. And uh, we got together, worked it out pretty quickly. And I was like in here three weeks later. Wow. I, I was like, house is great. We agreed on the deal. I said, leave everything. And uh, Francesco was great. He's actually become a buddy of mine. Beautiful, man. And um, yeah, I love it here. It's insane. It's How many bedrooms is it here? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah can you give us like the whole house here? I'm not, I'm not, it's not my thing. I'm like, you guys, yeah, yeah. you guys go roll on you. You guys make yourself at home afterward. Oh, uh, he, he's been here since Yeah, no, I was in the sauna. Just so you know. I was using the elevator. Did you, did you do the cold plunge? Yeah, I did the cold plunge. So you I did, did my first cold <laughs> plunge. I'm I told you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've never done the cold plunge before. I'm actually terrified of it. And so all my boys, like everyone tells me how great the cold plunge is. So I finally, like, I, I really like got myself ready. Like I can do this. I can get in this thing. I got in it. I made it three seconds. I'm like, I'm the fuck out of this thing. It was like, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. I, I honestly was wondering yeah. whether the people that were with me could give me CPR if my heart shut down from the cold plunge. So yeah. I was definitely a little bitch, but. Um, it's crazy that you say that because like all you've accomplished to like not to like mentally because it, it takes so much. I only so tried much. for the first time like last time I was here. So I'm going to try again. I'm yeah. going to get it. I didn't go but in it, by the way. next time you see me, I'll have it mastered. Yeah, I, I believe. I didn't go in it, by the way. I was joking. Totally. I'm not. You should go in it. Yeah, I'd love to. Go in after. Go I'll in. tell you what. Go in on my beach. Do you like the cold punch? I love it. I have one in my house. How long can you? How long? Seven can you, minutes is the most I've ever done. So you can do seven at minutes what today temp? here? 42. So should we finish this at seven minutes here? See how you do? I can do it. Yeah. Oh, let's go. I'm, I'm done. No We're gonna finish we just went to there. Russia. Do you know the fighter Islam? No. They're from Dagestan. Like, you know, do you know Khabib? Yes. Of it's course. like his prodigy went there and did like the real Russian cold plunge in like the, the lake. It was, cr- it was How so, cool. fr- I think it was like 32. You went in too? I went in too. How about you? You're quiet over here on the cold plunge. What? No, I, I don't. I can't do that. He's definitely not a cold plunge. <laughs> I don't do the cold guy. plunge. All right, so you should do the cold plunge today. See how you do. Yeah, okay, I, can, do I mean, I could do it. Like, I'm not a bitch. I'll do it. But it's that's how I felt. But I got to tell you something. It humbles you very quickly. Oh, you've never done it? I have, bro. Okay. Like a minute. Oh, this will be great. Because <laughs> I know exactly gonna, what you're talking we're about. We're going to end this. This one's cold. But who who convinced you? Like, who was the guy who was like, Michael, you have to do this. It's going to change you. <sighs> I hate like the, like, I, I, it's a lot of my friends have uh, pushed me on it. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. And they, they come here and they, they, my boys have been through the house. Like, this cold plunge is amazing. Like, you, you got to get in. Did you see it, actually? No, I was totally joking. Okay, I'm not well, running around. I want to check it out. I was like, <laughs> listen, you can run around at the end. I don't okay. care. I'm going to go back to work. You yeah. guys run around and then you, you go in the cold punch. I expect you in it. No, you, I'll do it 100%. The, okay, well, the end of this podcast needs to be you in the cold punch. I promise Sweet. you. Okay, okay, going off that though. So I, let's take it back to like, I guess your story. I know you talked about this a few different times on a few different podcasts as far as business goes. The thing that I find so interesting about you is every time you talk about like you, you did the ski stuff, you were, you were shoveling snow at eight years old, you're doing all this like crazy stuff at such a young age. You said you were making, you made like 25,000 at 13. I've watched, I've watched a few different interviews. I guess my question to you without trying to go over the same information I know you've explained a lot is you've had so much like drive as like a young individual to make money. Where does that come from? Because at eight years old, most kids aren't thinking about making money, shoveling snow and trying to get other kids to work for them. So that, you know what I'm saying? I think in a lot of ways, it's just something you're born with or you're not. Like I am, it's crazy. When I think about it now, I'm more driven than I've ever been. I work harder today Right now, I'm working harder than I've ever worked. Like, I'm thinking about this, and I was actually going to bed last night after, like, I was sort of dizzy from working so hard. And I'm thinking, like, why am I killing myself like this? But then I'm just like, I go right back at it, because it's just like, it's the mentality I have. I believe, like, um, just hard work, intensity, will, will persevere. Like, anything I want to do, I feel like I can get myself to do. And if I really want to do the cold punch for seven minutes, I could figure out how to do it because I would just be determined to do it. And so I was the same way at eight years old. And I was always, I said this a hundred times, but I was like the shittiest student in the world, the worst athlete in the world, 
But like, I always just had an insane work ethic and a little bit of common sense. Those two work pretty well together. Yeah. Like but, a lot of people talk about like they have the drive, but they really don't have the drive. Like I have the drive. But what like you just, because what at eight years old teaches you that? You just had it, you think? And that's that's like, why I said, I think you were kind of born with it. Like okay, I just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah like I think, you know, you know, um, some people like to sleep a lot. And, you know, some people like to, you know, action. Like, I love action. Like, I was just here for you know, Grammy's weekend with Robert Kraft. Guy's turning 82 in June. The guy's got more energy than I have. And I'm like, endless energy. I'm like, Robert, how do you do this? Like, you're a beast. And it's like, I said, what do you mean? He was, you know, we go nonstop, you know, most of the weekend. And then he literally gets on a plane, flies back overnight. I'm like, you have to make the bed up. He's like, no, nah, I don't need the bed. I'm like, what are you talking about? You have a four-hour flight. Like, have him make the bed up for you. You know, it's going right back, right in the office, right to do things. And it's, it's just like, I don't know. Some people just have those killer instincts that drive. Yeah. Go ahead. Wait, no, I want to. So you said 25,000 at 13. I think it would be yeah. cool for our wait, audience wait, to get to my, to get your story too. Yeah. I just want to know, what did you do at, with 25,000 when you were 13 years it old? It wasn't drugs. Yeah, no, but do you just <laughs> save that up? Hide it under yeah. your bed or what? No, so I was. Um, the ski stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I truly was. And people like, yeah, I do like to make fun of myself, but. Like, I literally was a terrible student. Yeah. Um, you know, when I took my SATs, I got a 780 combined, by the way. Not on half. Yeah, combined. that's not very good. Okay. Mine was higher, but yeah. Yeah, but everyone's was higher. I, I've it's never not good. It. That's the point. I'll right. just throwing yeah. that out there, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Do you I'm know how saying, SATs work? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah. If you could get, I think you get 400 for your name on it. So like a, <laughs> a 780 is- You live in your sister's apartment, though, pretty, not here. Pretty right? dismal. Yo, chill. Um, <laughs> Why do you got to put me on blast like that? Dude, sorry. <laughs> just because your reaction. Sorry. I stay at the so Waldorf so sometimes. self-deprecating crew. We all got to make fun I of say Exactly. Around. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but I stay at the Waldorf sometimes. Just putting that out there. Yeah. Okay. So, Yo, wait, 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 wait. Wait, you just say you say at the Waldorf sometimes? Just put yeah, it out like there? once a month. So what does that mean? Just, bro. You're saying ahead, this to a Michael. billionaire? You say at the Waldorf? You think no, it, but he's got to throw that out there. Like, not many people know that. Listen, your boys <laughs> like to make fun of you. Like, bro, yeah, yeah. it's all love. We love you, bro. Nah, but get, go ahead. I'm not getting any ass saying on my sister's couch. Go ahead, Do we Mike. need a group hug real quick? No, we should. Me and him might need to. <laughs> okay. You know, in the cold We'll do in the cold brunch. You got it. That's how we're going to. This is ending. Yes. You have to, you guys, like, you have to make your podcast great. You gotta, like, you got to end in the, in the uh, you got to end in the cold punch. Easy. We're doing it. Easy. It's like leaving it on the court. So this is, just, this is. Just, yeah. You, so I'll tell you a quick story. So yeah, anyway, so I was like a terrible student. Like I could never focus on um, school. It was always hard for me. Like I had terrible ADD from when I was like I a little kid. People didn't even know what it was. Um, I really wasn't a good athlete. Like I was the guy they picked last. And like, I only get picked for, actually I just had a basketball game. And I didn't get picked last. I said it was the first time I haven't got picked last in some type of athletic event <laughs> in my life. But I loved to work from when I was a kid. So I was always selling things like at eight years old, like literally it would snow and I would go and I would sell the snow shoveling and I would hire kids to work for me. And I would, yeah. you know, I was trading baseball cards as a business and I was selling you know, um, stationary door to door that I would make on the Apple II Plus, uh, which no one probably even knows what an Apple II Plus computer was. Yeah. Know? But did you, um, I guess the question is, did you have someone show you this? Cause like, no, it was all just instincts I was born with. I loved okay. it. I loved to work. I would do any job as a kid. And so um, I went to um, ski camp in the summer and I learned how to tune skis. And, and a buddy of mine said, like, you love business so much. And basically, like, because we always made fun of each other, like, you suck at school and you suck at sports. So, it's a good friend group. Well, yeah, it's good. It's good. So why don't you start a ski tuning shop? And I did. I did that at 12 years old. And then I got really lucky. It didn't snow uh, that season. They had this big ski swap where all these different local ski shops were bringing in their inventory. And um, I helped um, a ski shop, which was called Bauman Ski Shop, sell their excess inventory. And I said, hey, why don't you lend me some of your excess inventory? So I put it in my parents' basement. I took it on consignment. And that year I made $25,000 just borrowing skis and selling them. At what like age? My, 13. 13, That's yeah. That's fucking crazy. What did your parents think of that? 25 well, he was a millionaire by 13, 21. bro? Well, by the way, my mom was a psychiatrist. And so I think she knew I was crazy from day one. So yeah. I think I was diagnosed as definitely a little bit out there from day one. Yeah. What were you spending at that time when you were 13 and you have 25 racks? Remember you bought it, you bought it. You know what's funny? Yeah. I didn't, I think at that age, I didn't really give a shit. The first dumb thing I did was definitely, I was, I guess, either 14 or 15. I did buy half a Porsche, yeah. which I was not legal to drive. Half a Porsche? <laughs> yeah, and I bought it with a friend and I hid okay. it down the street from funny. my family. And then my dad came home from like a, from a, a, like this club he was in one day. He's like, Michael, did you, uh, one of the guys said you bought a, a Porsche, did you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, um, is it nice? I'm like, yeah. He's like, um, he's like, you ought to tell your mom. I remember my mom comes out and she was the serious, much more serious one. She comes, I hear the footsteps coming down. 
she says, and my dad says, you know, you know, Paulette, you know, Michael has something to tell you. And I said, mom, I bought a Porsche. <laughs> she starts laughing and walks out of the room. And I remember my dad um, says, Paulette, I think you ought to come back here. And then it was screaming at the top of her lungs when she realized that I was, was not kidding. So yeah. I did have that at 15. Actually, I guess I was 15 when I did it. Yeah. In relationship to like family and stuff, because obviously it's not normal for a 15 year old or 12 year old, eight year old to be doing so much like work. Did your parents ever doubt you? Or were they always just believing in you? Was there any sort of? No, I think, you know, if we're being blunt, keeping it real. I mean, my yeah. relationship with my parents was always incredible, but did they doubt me as a, as a kid? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. my, my mom said like, I shouldn't be in business. I should go to school and be a normal kid. And, you know, my dad kind of just said, look, if your grades are good, which they weren't, you know, I'll be supportive. And so, um, you know, I, I actually, there was only one time I ever borrowed money, um, from my mom and dad, my, we grew up very middle class. Like we, you know, yeah. we did not grow up, you know, people always assume like, hey, you grew up like a, a rich kid. I didn't like a lot of, I have a lot of friends who are, you know, grew up as rich kids. I did not yeah. grow up as one of those kids. We grew up in a, you know, the house, you know, that um, I lived in from, you know, when I was born till, um, till, you know, I moved out on my own. Um, that house today is about a $500,000 house. Um, so we grew up a very middle class family. It was yeah. a nice house and it was great, but we were certainly not well off. Um, my mom was always like, this isn't right. You should focus on um, you should focus on school. And so at 16, when I'd already had the ski shops and I had done maybe a half a million dollars in business the year before, the following year it didn't snow. So if now you're like 16, you're getting a little off track. Yeah. You know, you're buying half of a Porsche, it doesn't snow. Um, we, I literally was dead ass, like technically bankrupt. Yeah. And I had about a four month period where the local sheriff became like my homie. <laughs> she would come to my house every day and drop off the lawsuits of the people Robert, that were yeah. suing me. I got sued at least a hundred times. For what? At age 16, because I couldn't pay the bills because I had $200,000. Vendors and stuff. Yeah, $200,000 I owed to vendors and I had $80,000 in inventory and the half of Porsche. Yeah, um, yeah. So I can't forget the half of Porsche, right? Um, which, by the way, I think it was, I think it was like twelve. It's twenty four thousand dollar car at that point. It was remember it was thirty five years ago or something. Yeah. So, um, so I was basically you know broke, and I went to my and, and so basically I hired a bankruptcy lawyer, and I, I thought I was done. Like I was dumb. I was done. It was over. And the bankruptcy lawyer says to me, you know, you know, by the way, like he gets all these creditors together. We have this meeting with the creditors and all these people who want to kill me because I can't pay the two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And someone says, by the way, how old are you? I, I didn't even know this. I said, um, at this point, I said I'm sixteen. Everyone's, everyone, they, they look like ghosts. I guess you couldn't know, you couldn't incur debt, so you were eighteen legally. That's clutch. And so <laughs> Come the two hundred thousand dollars, they they said, hey, if you can pay us eighteen cents on the dollar, we'll um, you know, we'll you know, we'll settle with you. And so I went to my mom and dad and said, hey you know, can I borrow $30,000, which was a fortune to them. And they said, yes, on one condition. Uh, you agree to shut the business down and go to college. And so I agreed. Um, but that created a couple issues. One, I couldn't get into any college. It was the first problem. Yeah. You know, I applied to Villanova, um, Temple, and um, Drexel, all rejected me. I then happened to do a radio show on the sports station in Philadelphia and Roly Massimino, um, God rest his soul, was the basketball coach of Villanova, obviously, who did the show after me. And he actually got me into Villanova after I didn't get in. Yeah. So I actually tried to fulfill the promise I made to my parents. But I sat in the parking lot the first couple of weeks. And now at this point, I'm 18. I'm buying and selling clothes. So now I'm you know, doing great in business. I, probably, I was probably doing $30, $40 million at 18 buying is, and selling closeouts. Yeah. Okay. And so I couldn't actually focus on school. I'm like, you know, I would literally drive to school. The phone was like what you'd see in like one of those drug dealer movies, like, 40 years ago, the phone was like this big. I'd, yeah. I'd sit in my car, I'd be, you know, buying and selling things. And like, you know, there's no way you could get me to actually, you know, focus on going to school. So I yeah. made it about six weeks. So I, well, at 18 though, this was still just ski stuff? Like doing 30? No, I was doing sneakers at this point too. Okay. Like I remember- 30 to 40 million? Yeah. At 18? Yeah. It's That's different. I was, doing, I was doing, by the time I was 21, I remember, I can't remember exactly, but I was doing over a hundred million dollars in revenue, probably making 10 million of profit as a 21 year old. Remember you got to go back. This is 30 years ago. So doing $100 million in business and making $10 million 30 years ago, pre-internet, is actually a real business. Oh, it's insane. insane. Well, so, so let's talk about that a little bit. Like uh, The timing-wise, how important do you think timing is? Because at the same time, not that you didn't work hard. Of course, the, the things that you've done is incredible. But like 
could someone today, like someone watching this, could they create the same sort of income the same way you did now today? Or is it even greater now? Because it's such a different playing field. Yeah. Like his timing. Look, I think in a lot of ways, it's a lot easier today for a young person to build a business because of the internet and technology. And you see yeah. so many kids now that are, you know, social media has created such a platform for people to, to build businesses very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, and technology has created such a platform. So I say it's much easier to, I'd say I did it in the hard, in the hard times, yeah. like, you know, selling sneakers, you know, you know, one trail at a time or skis, you know, um, one lot at a time is probably more complex than it is today. Yeah, for sure. What, what about social media now for you? Cause you're pretty viral all over there. You know, it's funny. I was never into it at all. And then I always, I had like the creeper account where I followed my friends, yeah. but I didn't, um, I didn't, I, I never went on. And then like, I literally went on in 2018 and I, and what I realized was it really is a platform for talking about the things that I care about. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about things we're doing from a business perspective. I'm talking about what we're doing with the reform Alliance. Um, I'm, you know, promoting my friends. I'm making fun of myself. So like, it's, it's, it's fun for me now. Yeah. Yeah. How did you start getting involved in? I mean, we, we know about the fanatics party, the Super Bowl, which. Kyle went to last year. I don't know how you get, how you like decide who's on that list or whatnot. Well, actually, it's the single thing that I hate most. Is, yeah. It's actually. Are you and trying to get an invite to a party right now? I've gone before. Okay. I went Listen, to one in Miami. I got you guys, but I got to tell you something. Yeah. There is right now for this weekend in the Super Bowl, I'd say we're going to have eight or 900 people and there are probably 50,000 people trying to come to this party. How, how do you do that? How do you decide who makes the list? I just know that a lot of people are just not going to like me. I mean, we really do. it. It's people, it's our business partners that are really important to us. It's, you know, people that are influential that, you know, help build the Fanatics brand. Um, and it's our really, really good friends. Uh, and that's who comes to the party. So and I can you, tell you something right now. Yeah. Like uh, <clears throat> we just, I literally walked out of my office and, and, you know, we take, we actually take 250 people for the weekend to the game. Okay. Then I have my suite that I do. And then we have this party and it, it is absolutely mayhem. You know, I thought the white party was the thing I got tortured most with, with people trying to come to. I actually think right now, this Super Bowl for the first time, we are, we're actually having a music festival. We got, um, you know, Travis performing, Jay Balvin's performing, Chainsmokers are performing, Baby's performing. Um, you know, a couple of my friends who I saw this weekend told me they're going to just jump up and do some special performance. So it's going to be fun. I mean, now- I hope, I hope I can actually have fun at it, but it will be fun for everybody else. It seems like you're pretty much in the culture now. Because like these guys, like you just said, who's performing, they are your friends. Like, I mean, you hang out with what? We saw at the white party, Lil Baby, Migos, but they're performing at the parties, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of those guys are brothers to me. I mean- So yeah. how do you get those relationships? Is there any business relationship or it's all just your boys? So I, I'd say I'm um, you- in. Anything I do, I'm huge on doing things authentically and never forcing anything. So if you look at any relationship I have, business, personal, whoever it is, I always do things authentically. The second you try to force things, I think bad things happen. Um, and so in business, um, you know, I think I've built, you know, a fair amount of deep relationships, but they've been built over long periods of time. Um, you, you know, look, we have, we do have a lot of people that are important to sports entertainment that have become real friends of mine, but they're real, they're, they're like my real friends. And, and um, you know, I try to always give a lot more than I ask. I try to always help a lot more than I ask, but I'm also some, someone to be honest, like the way I learn is as a sponge. Like I don't learn by reading. I barely read. I don't, you know, watch much media. Like I learn by like, you know, asking people questions, Listen. having great people around me. And that's the way I learn. So like, um, you know, we all learn from each other. Like there's not a day that goes by in my life where like, you know, we're not all helping each other. So, you know, yeah, there's lots of great people around, but like, I, you know, I always want to make sure I'm giving lots because I think that's what, you know, I always want to be a giver, not a taker. Yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have a question on, on a note, kind of the celebrity thing. Um, when to say when the Drake song, you're, he mentioned the verse. I watched Michael Rubin win a couple million, win a million off a couple hands. What was that like? What what actually happened? This is a real story, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, you, you like look, to gamble. Yeah, Drake's my look. I, I've always had the gambling gene. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, uh, in the spirit of telling stories, you probably shouldn't tell, but whatever, who cares? Yeah. Um. The fir the first time I won in gambling, I think I won twenty five hundred bucks. Um, and the problem was the gambling age was eighteen at this point, <laughs> but I was fourteen. Oh my god! I, I, I remember calling my mom from a payphone in an Atlantic City casino. I said, I was so excited. Like, mom, dad, like, 
I just won 2,500 bucks, you know, in the casino. And my dad's like, that's amazing. My mom's like, you're grounded. I'm like, oh, well, I'm excited. I just won 2,500 bucks. <laughs> Get home, you're grounded. Um, so like, I always had the gambling gene. You know, for me, there aren't a lot of things that can get my brain to take its mind off of like work, what I'm doing. So like gambling is a place. And I, you know, look, I, I don't ever want to speak on Drake's behalf, but I think he would tell you the same thing. It's like, it's, and I think a lot of my friends would say the same thing. You get, you get your mind to think about something other. And people don't, if you don't, if you don't like to gamble, you know, you won't understand this, but it does, you know, distract you from everything else in life. So it's a good mental break. Now you need to do it with a control and within your means and all yeah. the things that obviously we all understand. But yeah, look, I've been, you know, Drake and I have had many gambling nights. We've had some pretty bad ones and we've had, you know, some good ones too. Where do you get, like in Vegas or, or mm -hmm. online or? I, 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 well, and with us getting the gambling business a big way, I'm, I've actually never gambled online. I've only, only been live in casinos. And I think if you'd say where Drake and I've been in casinos, I, I think you've n named just a few of the uh, <laughs> locations. I think Bahamas. We've, de we've, de we've definitely no, hit all. We've definitely hit Bahamas AC. Yeah. Yeah. How much, Vegas, what's the most sure. you've ever won gambling? I'm not. Uh, Damn, I'm so yeah. curious. Yeah. We've had good and bad days. Yeah, for sure. Fanatics is going to be getting into the, the iGaming space, right? We're yeah. big gamblers yeah. too, yeah, so we can all bring it up. Our I fans love it, to yeah. gamble too, but what's, can you say any plans on that? Front? Yeah, look, you know, Fanatics today is in three businesses. The business we started in that we call commerce was the merchandise business. That business has, you know, grow, grown quite a bit. You know, um, you know, we own Lids, we own Mitchell Ness, we own Fanatics, we operate Insane. each of the league stores. That's about, you know, this year, it's about a six and a half billion dollar business. It's about $250 million business when we started, yeah. um, you know, 11 years ago. And we're just getting started there, by the way. We have so much to do. You know, Liz is growing internationally. You know, Fanax is growing like crazy. Mitchell Ness is growing like crazy. Um, again, we feel like there's so much we can do to make it better for the fan. Um, collectibles business we can talk about later. But the gaming business, um, you know, I'm super bullish in. Um, I think at the end of the day, we have, Fanax has, you know, close to 100 million customers today. Um, and when I think about, you know, those customers, probably half of them are sports gamblers. And, um, and then we have the collectibles business and trading cards. And so these businesses really fit together. So we think with the advantage we have from a marketing perspective, that we already spend you know, probably half a billion dollars on, on marketing last year, that budget's grown each year, you know, the ability to, to leverage and make it better for the fan and kind of create one, you know, kind of integrated experience where you can get your merchandise you can gamble, you can get your collectibles over time. Lots of other things you'll be able to do with Fanatics is, it, I think, a big opportunity for us. Yeah. When, when do you guys think you'll like yeah. launch that type of stuff? Um, well, I mean, we'll, we'll launch, I mean, we just opened up our sports book last month. We'll be in, uh, we'll be in, in beta um, next month and then we'll be in, in public rollout within a few months. But I mean, by the end of this year, we'll be in basically in every how, major How state. does the back end does, like that work? Do you guys get the licenses yourself or do you partner with- Yeah, we're going to be the operator. Okay. We're absolutely going to be the operator. And, you know, look, we think about things very long term. I mean, for us, you know, the business, you know, it's going to be a fairly sizable business. So we don't think about like, you know, what's going to work in the near term. We think about where do we want to be a decade from now, two decades from now, three yeah. decades from now. When I think about this business long term, I think about having, you know, billions of sports fans everywhere on the planet look at Fanatics as the go-to place they go to to get their merchandise, to do online sports betting, to get, you know, trading cards and collectibles. And so many other things that we can give them over time, kind of the digital sports platform for everything they need. And so we're just getting started. By the way, we have so many things we can do better. We have so many things we're, you know, we're just going with. So, um, you know, I think this will be a really big business for us. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's gonna be I got like, manager. that's great. Two, two questions kind of along this line. Like, number one, like, why sports for you? Because you, you obviously got into it uh, early on and your timing with uh, like, GSI, the, the company that you, you sold, what you, you, it was when you officially, be, I don't know if you officially became a billionaire at that point or not, but you knew to e-commerce at the time, which was so new, you knew to like sell like products for people, these bigger companies, Sports Authority, like you made these deals. Like how did you have the foresight to what e-commerce would be today? And, and, why, and then why did you decide sports? Yeah. So the first company I started was in 1999 called GSI Commerce. That's what eBay bought in 2011 yeah. for $2.4 billion, which was a public company. I was a you know, at that point, a small shareholder of the public company that I founded. Right. And, um, you know, the way I got in that business in 1998, 1999 was really um, by accident, luck, and entrepreneurialism. That's the way a lot of things in life happen for, for entrepreneurs. What happened was the internet was going crazy and I was like very anti the internet. If you were like, this is crazy. In 98, I was like, kind of, everyone said to me, hey, you know, this internet bubble's happening. Like, you guys should be in e-commerce. I was like, 
I owned a couple of footwear brands. I was in the business of buying and selling the clothes up merchandise we talked about. My original thought process was kind of like, honestly, like, fuck these internet guys. Like, they all do a lot of business. The top line, they, none of them know how to make money. Like, I'm an old school entrepreneur. This is my, by the way, mid 20s. I'm an old school entrepreneur. That's insane. Um, and so they, there was the, the real story of what happened there's this guy who's, you know, still my partner today. His name is Mike Khan. And he was an analyst on a Wall Street firm. And he called me up and he said, um, you know, Michael, you see what's happening with all these, you know, you know, e-commerce companies. And like, I literally said to him, like, fuck those guys. Like, I'm not interested. Like, you know, we make real money. And he said to me, look, if there's so much euphoria about this, like, you ought to really think about it. I hung up on him. Like, I don't want to hear this. And then he called me back on Black Friday. It was probably the only day of the year that I couldn't work because I was in the business of selling shoes and closeouts to these retailers who they were all in the store selling this stuff. So there was nobody to sell anything to. And so he said, like, look, you're missing this, man. You should really think about this. And so I did what any entrepreneur would do. I called the CEO of the Sports Authority and the CEO of Models and the CEO of Dix. I said, yeah. what are you guys doing about this whole e-commerce thing? And everyone said the same thing to me. They're like, look, man, like, we don't understand e-commerce. This is, again, this is 1998, Christmas in 1998. Yeah, timing. Like, yeah. you're young. If, like, you have a solution for this, tell us. And, like, we'll do it with you. And after, like, 10 people said that to me, that's how I came up with the idea of starting GSI Commerce in 98. And so I did it kind of just because I fell into it because someone said like, you should think about this thing. And then we sold the company in 2011 and eBay didn't want Fanatics, which was a nothing business at that point. And that's when I bought that back for them and kind of, you know, begun the the long you know journey that we've been on of building it into, you know, what you're starting to see some of our reforms up today. How, so, how does a deal like that go down with eBay? For what'd you say, 2.4 billion? Yeah. How, like, how does that, I don't know, that's crazy. How does that kind of start it, and- yeah, well, the process of that. you know, eBay approached us and what eBay really wants to do, and they, they were smart for doing this. It didn't work out exactly where everybody wanted it to, but eBay approached us and said, look, you have this business and you work with all these big retailers and these, these big, um, you know, brands, companies like Ralph Lauren, Estee Lauder, GNC, Toys R Us, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods. They want to get these companies into their marketplace to be more competitive with, with uh, Amazon. And so they want to buy GSI to get these relationships. And um, it, it just didn't work. Um, you know, it didn't work as well as they wanted to, but that's why they bought the company was to get these companies into their into their marketplace. And so they came and said, "Hey, we want to buy the company." Then we hired bankers to represent us, and ultimately they bought the company for you know two point four billion dollars. It's it's just crazy because originally you you had the mindset of like the internet is you know fuck this at this point, but now like would you say that most of your income is from e commerce? Through fanatics, definitely, yeah, which is insane. It's yeah, like, which means you can be wrong. And you just got to do the one eighty. I'm yeah. very good at that. But I mean, you're, you're so I, good at I like fuck things pivot. up all the time, and I'm very good at you know. Yeah. Hey, I thought I had it, and I wasn't right. But that's great. That's like incredible in life. Like I love to learn from my mistakes. People, I was just saying this to somebody over the weekend. Like I like taking L's, and I'm like, how do you like taking L's? Because you learn from your L's, you grow, and you do better next time. Me too. Yeah. What are the biggest things you think that are important when you're like trying to sell a company? Well, I think there's. The most important thing is to build something that's long lasting. Like, you know, think about what you guys are doing. You guys are building, you know, this great show that, you know, gets, you know, incredible viewership. And the more successful you make this, the more valuable you make it. So to For me, sure. you build a great product, you build a great business, everything works itself out. If you just try to sell a business to sell it, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, so many people say, hey, like, I want to build something to get rich. Well, that's wrong. We build a great product, build something that people love, build, build a great business, everything will work itself out. Try to build something just to build it, it ain't going to work. Yeah, super. To sell super. it, I mean. So in, in regards kind of to that, but in the self-belief of being able to do so, like how important is self-belief in your opinion as far as like all the success that you've had? And have you ever not had self-belief in yourself at any point? Yeah, so I've always, I've never, like the thing that makes me a little bit different is I have no fear, no fear of failing at all. Like I just don't give a shit. It's still today. So like if you have that mentality, you just keep going for it. And so I'm always going for it. Like I'm always like, no, no fear like that at all. Um, and I think that that's where I'm a little bit different. I think people, even as they get older and more successful, they become more nervous to take those chances. Like I like risk. I like the action. And, and again, like failing is cool. Like there's no problem with that. You, you learn from your failures. So long as you're like learning and growing, like the most important thing to me every day is to learn and grow. That's what I love to do. I wake up, I go at it with everything I got and I want to learn and grow. And if yeah. I do that each day, life's great. Going off that, what do you think your lowest point in your career has been? Because it um, sounds like you've been pretty successful, just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Well, I've had many low points from a business perspective, but I've never felt like there were low points in my career. 
Mm -hmm. That's a very different. So like, I mean, I can remember in the financial crisis of 2009 that our stock had dropped by 90%. I was almost pushed out of my company. And I was also almost broke for maybe like the 98th time. And, you know, this is only 14 years ago. And I was never phased. Like I like to fight every day. And guess what? I fought through it. Like there was literally, and this is not an embellishment or an exaggeration. I owed a bank about $50 million in 2008 personally. I got this debt down to during the financial crisis down mm -hmm. to about $3 million. And I couldn't pay the last $3 million off. And the bank was going to sell. I was secured against the shares of my public company. And the bank was going to start selling my shares. And um, I couldn't find the money to pay him the last $3 million. But every day I kept calling people who I was invested with that I couldn't get the money out of because they were in bad situations. And I just, until I got it done, I didn't give up. And that was my mentality. And so my point is like, you could say it was a low point. I almost, you know, went bankrupt. I almost got kicked out of my company. My stock was down by 90%. I was nearly broke. I was like, man, that was a fucking blast. Like, I like this action. <laughs> Yeah, like that's sweat. what that's, yeah. the inner he gambler. Like that's sweat. a big but, sweat, though. But, 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 by the way, if you ask Brady when he was down 28 3 in the Super Bowl, was he depressed? I'm sure he'd tell you, like, fuck that. Like, I want to go out. Well, like, like, I'm just saying, like, it's like if you have that mentality, you can overcome anything you want. Then, it, like, you, 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 you almost like, like, if I go to a casino, <laughs> I get my ass whipped. I'm not like, like, Quitting, I'm like I'm fighting back. Now, by the way, I could still get my. <laughs> no, this just reminds me of Steve. I could still right get my. It's true in gambling. So if you bad. never quit, you'll just. But the NFL right? scripted now. You know that, right? What's that? That's what the NFL they're saying. Scripted? The NFL is scripted now. What do you mean it's scripted now? Have you heard that? No. The rumors. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, they're like saying that because the uh, Chargers came back from that 31-0 lead. The NFL is not scripted. That's bullshit. That's dumb. That's yeah. wrong. That's what they're saying. I got How a question. I got a question. This is a little bit more like uh, on a personal level. Like you have essentially anything you could want, you could buy, right? So what would you say now in your life? Well, do I, don't, you... I, I don't agree with that at all. Okay. So there's other things you can't buy that you'd want. Well, the most important thing is you live a happy life. Well, this is what I'm asking you. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna... so like I mean, material things don't do a thing. Like you can have all, like, let me tell you something. I know so many people that are so rich and they're yeah. miserable. Okay. Yeah. I talk about this with my friends all the time. There's nothing worse than rich, miserable people. Well, the question I was going to okay? ask you was like, what does someone give you now that is actually showing value? Their sincere friendship. Yeah. Their love having fun together, yeah. enjoying life. Like, I don't like, I don't really, like, yeah, it's nice. Is this a nice house? Absolutely. Is this house changing my life? Absolutely not. If you told me right now that you, you're not going to believe me, but if you told me I lost everything tomorrow morning, I lived in a one bedroom apartment, I'd wake up with the same energy and same attitude. What do you mean? Call bullshit on it. I'm like, not calling bullshit. I'm just saying, people I wonder. Will, people will listen to this and say the guy's oh, full of shit. Oh, I don't believe, I, I mean, you wouldn't be where you're at if that was not true. Right. Like, I, like I'd be like, Okay, this can be fun. This can be an adventure. What do you? That's why I'm so curious. Like, why? No, why I just, I just actually, I'll tell you something that's interesting. So I started asking people. I was at someone's birthday, who's been really successful, who is turning seventy, and I asked them a question, and they gave me the wrong answer. And I said to him, "Let me ask you a question. If you give all of your money up to be fifty-five, you were dead ass broke. Would you do it? How old was he? At the seventy. Time? 70. Right? Yeah. Okay. So it was his seventy birthday. Okay." They said, hell no. They said, would you? I said, wait, for 15, I can go from 50 to 35? I said, fuck, I'll buy them for 40 right now. I'll give everything I have right now. I'll get 10 years back in my life for sure. Everything. I'll start with zero and have a blast doing it, by the way. That'd be so fun. To subtract yeah. 20 years? 10 years. No, I'll buy them for 10 years. What? I'll give everything I for have. For how much? Everything I have for 10 years. Whoa, dude. That's a large statement. Not even a question. That's, just, just, that makes that's just, cool though. Well, it does. It makes sense. I mean, it's well, all we about know the you journey. would never do that, Brad. It's all about the pro I <laughs> What's that? You wouldn't do that, you greedy fuck. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Jesus Christ. How old, you, how, how old are you? 33. Right. See, but, but by the way, when you're like, I'm 50, now. I've lived a little bit more than half my life, probably. So it's like, I don't like, I, like I don't want to be fit. The, by the way, the biggest thing you can't buy is age back. Like you can't of course, get time. 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 Yeah. Let's get Happy Dad to be the number one seltzer this summer. You can go to happydad.com slash find us to find a local store or bar that carries Happy Dad near you. And boys, make sure you tag us on Instagram at Happy Dad on your IG stories because we're reposting a ton of you guys. And don't forget, you got to be 21 plus to buy and drink Happy Dad. 
Why do you think it is so common? You said all your, a lot, or I don't know if you said your friends or whatever, but a lot of rich people are so miserable. What do you think is missing in their life or why are they not happy? I, I think people get so obsessed with making money. Like I like to make money for the game, for yeah. the action. I don't like to make money for the money of it. I also don't, don't, don't like, you know, I'm not out there, you know, I don't wear a lot of, like, I, I'm not like, you know, I drive the same car. Like I, I drive Range Rovers. I don't have like a collection of cars. I'm not like a showy person. Like, yeah, do I live in a nice house? Cause I like to live in a nice house. Cause that's where I live. But I'm not like, you know, like I don't really care about money. Like I like to make money for the sport of it. It's, it's like, I'm a shitty athlete. I'm a shitty student. I compete in business. Like so yeah. many rich people, they're just miserable. Mm -hmm. And so like, I say like, and, and by the way, a lot of rich people also don't know how to live and like live their best life and like enjoy themselves. Like yeah. there's so many times I just want to say something like, Dude, be happy. I know. Uh, I think people yeah. think that, like, I know a guy that just wanted to get rich so bad. And they think that once you accomplish that, you will be happy. And once they're like, oh, I have all this fucking money and I'm still not happy. What the hell is wrong with me? Like I know so story? many people worth tens of billions of dollars that are so painful that I don't want to spend, one, that I run away from, that I don't want to spend one second with. Oh, fuck. Was that like a personal thing for you? Like, it sounded really personal. No, not personal. Oh, okay. I'm happy, dude. I'm fucking with fuck? you. No, okay, so on this line. Like, but I am sensing you're a little sensitive. <laughs> yeah. I just want I just want to say That's he, hilarious. Way, that's that's, that's kind of crazy you'd say something like that. I just yeah. want to say like I just I just feel like I feel like he can get I, I feel like he's fucking me and he gets under your skin a little bit. Why would you say that? Cuz he's I've, the big guy and I'm the small guy? No. Dude, but, even but, your but, reaction but, is on, funny right it, now. It's a small guy to a small guy. I mean, okay. I'm I'm all with small guys. I just Michael, I can assure you, I'm not sensitive whatsoever. I just take things and I just keep going. Mm. <laughs> yo, you know, you just he's also a little sensitive, right? Yeah, he is. Uh, He'll text me later and be like, "Yo, was that a good?" How bond? does everyone pick up on that, right, bro? It's because it's his demeanor. <laughs> it's fine. No, he's you're a little acting there, but yeah, it's it's not because it's off camera too. I still love you though. We're just, don't worry about it. The group hug in that hundred percent is gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, wait. Let's let's switch up and let's talk basketball. Didn't you just sell? You sold your stake for the Devils and the Sixers, right? I did to your buddy. Yeah. Um, and you couldn't do it. Is that because of the sports book? It became really complicated. Like I would say, um, the leagues in general have tons of rules that make it impossible. Like for how big fanatics is getting, you know, when we were only in the merchandise business before we had thousands of individual contracts with athletes, before we had all these athletes that were investors in our company, before we had, we were taking bets on our own team, um, before we had agents that were investors in the company, like if there were a rule the leagues had mm -hmm. that had to do with conflict, I think we found a way to, 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 to not conform with the rule. So it just became too complicated. It was an easy decision for me because fanatics, we have, I have like the greatest opportunity in the world. And this is the thing I'm probably most excited about. Like, look, business turns me on more than anything. And like to wake up every day and know, I have an opportunity to build one of the most amazing companies in the world and work with tens of thousands of amazing people that have a mission to like, you know, you know, build a great, you know, experience for sports fans and you know, keep, keep getting better and better, which we have so much work to do. Um, you know, like it's dreamy. And so I work mm -hmm. around sports and technology with great people, great athletes, great entertainers, great business people, you know, great associates. And so the Sixers became in the way of that. And so as soon as it was really in the way and it was inhibiting fanatics, yeah. I was like, okay, I got to move, move well, on. Well, that's what I'm curious about. Like how, since you have fanatics and you're so focused on that, how involved were you actually as an owner? Of the I was pretty involved and, and I'm still like, look, to be honest, and everyone knows this, it's a yeah. small world. I'm still pretty involved. I mean, you know, first off, you know, Joe and James are brothers to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love those guys and, you know, you know, they're, they're family to me. Um, you know, Josh Harrison Blitzer family to me, who are the two primary owners of the team. Dave Edelman, who bought my stock yeah. my, in, in the Sixers, is family to me. Um, so, you know, the, the, the Sixers are family. It's, you know, I, I, Fanatics makes you agnostic to sports. You almost like, become numb to outcomes, I believe for the Sixers. I think it's funny because you and Robert Kraft, your buddy, it seems like you guys out of all the owners are like most friendly with the players. Y yeah, and, and that's something that came very naturally. Like I didn't, like if anything, I think a lot of people try to keep their distance, but like I like to learn from people and I like to help people. And that's the way like people have always been with me. Like you talk about Robert Kraft, he's helped me so much in business as his, his you know, his oldest son, Jonathan Kraft. Like, these guys have been so helpful to, to just helping me build fanatics. And like the same way they've helped me, I want to help other people. So, you know, when, you know, when James Harden called me, you know, an hour before I walked in there this morning and had a couple of business things he wants to talk to me, but like I stop and I want to help him and like, you know, push him to, you know, to be better. He wants to push me to be better. And like, we're always pushing each other, whether it's by the way, whether I'm, you know, messing with him the way we're all messing with each other about, you know, 
you know, being the healthiest you can be, or, you yeah. know, like, I mean, we're all like, they're, 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 we got good banter on everything going on every day in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You how know? much do those guys come to you for advice? Like little baby or like business advice and stuff? Business advice a lot. You know, I don't think James or Joe has never asked me for yeah. advice on the basketball court. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, we talk about, but I, what, what I will tell you, I talk a lot about with people is like, like I'm a huge person on teamwork. Like I believe, you know, look, these guys are my friends, but look what just happened with the Brooklyn Nets. People would have said when you put KD, Kai, and, 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 and H together, like that, that team should have worked. Yeah. Multiple championships and it didn't work. And, you know, there's going to be- the second time too, though, that yeah, didn't work. That's my point. So what, what do we learn about that? Teamwork. You can get the best talent in the world in business, in sports. And if you don't work together as a team, yeah, you're, you're fucked. fucked. Okay. It's and so pretty crazy. the big thing I'm focused on, I talk about this at Fanatics all the time, Synergy. is teamwork. Yeah. Okay. And so I do a company meeting with all of our associates every quarter. Okay. Who's the first person I brought into my company meeting when we started doing this? Tom Brady. What did Tom Brady talk about? Not football. He talked about how he leads and how he brought people together and, you know, you know, and so by the way, Kevin Hart was the last guy we had. So I, I tried to find inspirational people that people in my company can learn about. And both these guys, Kevin and Tom, were great to inspire my company of how to work together. And so I'm so big on teamwork. So I won't talk with an athlete about what to do in basketball because that would be a joke because I don't know shit about it. But we, maybe we talk about this, how to work through adversity, how to work through tough times, definitely. But you're, you're a fan too at the same time. So like you watch the I game am. and you know how things go. Why do you think that never worked hard in KD and Kyrie? I don't want to speak on that, but what I what I can tell you is in business, in sports, to win, you need great teamwork. If you don't have great teamwork, you're not going to win. And I off I, I can tell you, you know what? Brady said this to the Fanatics team um this past summer. He said, Look, if you have multiple people fighting over the same ball, it ain't gonna work. And that's why people need to know their jobs and their roles. And so I think that's very important. Yeah, it's about the synergy. Um, I have a question in regards to like potential and, and how do you identify potential like projects or things you want to continue to move forward or how you want to move forward on them? And also like, how are you determining if someone has potential to, like as far as like a, a, an actionable job within like your organization? How do you determine potential? Well, first thing you need to say is, are people really important in, in your organization? And for us, um, people is everything. Like, you know, we built everything around teams. And by the way, it's the same thing in my life personally. Like if you look, like I had a lot of really good people around me. We're all learning from each other. Um, and by the way, you were asking about baby before. And like, you know, does he come to me for advice? He comes to me for business advice all the time, but I go to him for advice on stuff too. I'll ask him like, hey, will this, you know, is this a good idea or a bad, bad idea? Like talk about, you know, I remember, um, you know, um, First time Jay and, and ba Baby spent time in my house, I remember Jay was sitting and we were, we were on this conversation and Jay was talking about, I was asking Jay, like, you know, I got to figure out how that we make headwear, um, you know, consistently hot. And Jay looked at me and said, Michael, you're thinking about the wrong way. This, the way you put your sneakers on every day, the way you put your jeans on every day, the way you put your hoodie on every day, hat's part of that. That's just part of the wardrobe. Like, you got to think about it that way. And by the way, all three of you guys are in hats today. And so, you know, even like, that wisdom that I got from Jay in that moment, I, I, I remember walking out and calling the guy who runs Lids and calling the guy who runs our, our commerce business. I'm like, man, we're thinking about it. This isn't about like a fashion cycle. This is about how is part of the wardrobe. Like, why are we not even thinking that way? And like, and so that was like a great moment for me to learn from him, okay? And so I get nuggets from my friends all the time. So like, we're always learning from each other. Who That's do you think you go to cool. the most? Do you have a guy that you call to? Or like a mentor or anything. I mean, at this point, probably not, but. No, definitely. I got lots of people for sure. I'd say, look, the number one person for me has probably been, um, and I'd say, I'd say the Kraft family, Robert and Jonathan Kraft. I mean, these guys have been there for me um, and helped me when people didn't believe in me. And, you know, it's easy now for people to say, oh, I'm Ruben's boy, or, you know, I'm on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. You know, now if it's, obviously everyone wants to take us down because the bigger you get, but when you're getting bigger, people want to help you do better. And then as you get to, you know, as you start doing better, people want to take you down. Oh, but, yeah. You know, <laughs> like I think the number one person has been probably, you know, um, you know, I put, you know, Robin John and the craft together. These guys have just, you know, been there for me from the early days, helping me um, when a lot of people didn't believe in us. And, I ask a ton of questions. There's no day that goes by where I'm not just throwing questions out there, learning from people, gaining information. You know, I'll, when I go to the Super Bowl this weekend, you know, I'll be studying at everything we do, just picking up trends, ideas, listening to people. Um, and by the way, and then I come up with ideas and some are great and some suck. And that's, you know, part of the process. Yeah. 
I have a question about work. And you know the saying, like if you if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Definitely. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. I've never worked a day in my life. It's blessed. You just like every day you wake up, and you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, you guys are not gifted to do. This. No, I'm yeah, so it's grateful. A fucking blast. Yeah, but then when the too. taxes come and they're like, go, you know what I'm saying? Like it's. Or the flip side is, what an honor it is to pay those taxes. I mean, true. Obviously, wants we all want to pay the lowest taxes. Of pay. course, like, all about like, so. mindset, Brad. Right. Oh, but, thank you. No, I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you, <laughs> dude. Too, yeah, uh, dude. We're I'm glad you're team. giving it back to him a little bit now, too. Yeah, I, I usually do. I'm kind of off my game, bro. He is off his game today. I'm waved. Did you out last night? No, I didn't. For this, for this. Maybe that was a problem. You think I would go out and when I know I'm doing Michael Rubin the next I day? Just, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure you, uh, if you're taking abuse, I just want to make sure you give us. Oh, I give it back. Yeah, got oh, we got to rest up for Super Bowl weekend anyway, right? Yeah. What oh, does that look like for you? Yeah. What's your schedule like? When do you get in? Super Bowl weekend, I will say, is brutal. When do you get in? It's brutal. So I get in. Thursday night, mm -hmm. um, we host, so Thursday night at my house, I have just the top leaders of my company, like my executive team. What should I bring? Uh, you're coming. You, yeah, what you should see, I bring? You just come and hang with okay. Mashed yeah. potatoes or like a Caesar salad or something? Yeah. Just mash. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just sm small dinner, just kind of for the guys to really bond together. And then on Friday, I started something in Miami, which has become like an iconic lunch. Uh, we do, um, myself and Casey Wasserman host a lunch for kind of what I say the most hundred most influential people at um, the Super Bowl. And so the lunch is incredible. You have like, you know, probably half the owners, but the most business oriented owners to, you know, obviously, you know, Roger Goodell, but then you take about business partners, like the CEO of Verizon will be there, the CEO of NBC, the CEO of Damn. Fox, the CEO of TikTok. The fucking, that's um, fuck the fucking world, have, world, dude. Baby will be there. Meek will be there. You know, Trav's uh, coming this year. Um, Jay Bavin will be there. Um, Demar Hamlin's coming this year. Brittany Griner's coming. And it's only 100 people. So it's like, you cannot get to this lunch. So that's my Friday. Fuck, okay? dude. And it is an incredible lunch. And everyone everyone calls and says, can I come to this lunch? And I love everyone, but the answer is like, we make it for the, the 100. Like, we try to, you know, put together 100 incredible people that can all learn and grow from each other. And that whole spirit of my personality, we all want to learn from each other. So to me, it's so cool to have Brittany Griner, who went through what she went through, and Demar Hamlin, who, you know, nearly died in front of the whole world, you know, with the CEO of Verizon and the owners of the teams and Roger Goodell and, you know, but also having Baby and Meek and Tribe there and Jay Balvin there and, you know, and the CEO of TikTok there. And by the way, I love when I see the CEO of TikTok, you know, and I can pick up things from him about how I can build TikTok for, you know, fanatics. And yeah. so we're all learning from each other. Yeah. You ever get any nasty crazy. texts where someone's like, thanks for the invite, bro? So, I get so many. <laughs> oh, and you, just, you, you need to just almost not take it personally because it's like, okay, if, if the lunch I want to do is for the 100 most influential people at the Super Bowl, then that's what it's going to be for. And I'm, for anyone I offended, I'm sorry, I love you. Yeah. But like, it is what it is. And then Saturday we do the party, okay? And the party is, we don't sell tickets. It's purely a marketing party. It's, you know, for the fanatics brand, it's for the business partners that are most important to us. It's for the people that help us build our brand. And it's for like our really close friends. And by the way, the Eagles are in the Super Bowl this year. And I've had literally the party, we have probably 800 people. And I'd say I've had thousands of people from Philadelphia wait, reach out to me saying, can I come to your party? And the answer is no, I love you, but I can't do it. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how the party is. The party's yeah. supposed to be special for these 800 people. And then Robert Kraft and I host a suite. Um, at the Super Bowl, and, you know, it's got a, a crazy. Like a fucking great you probably get like ten. But, but, I'm, but so people are going to be mad at you all the time, and it yeah. is what it is. Like I don't know what to tell you. Like you know, call somebody. There's who, people out there playing the game, probably. Like don't miss your happy birthday text. Make sure you get a Christmas gift. I get so much guilt every day, but I'm just like I just wake <laughs> up and smile. It is is what it is. Dude, that's yeah. so funny. It's no different than people hitting you up for things. You do what you think is right. Like I like I get hit up every day for things, and I'm cool with that. And I, like I'm fortunate to be in that position. I'm lucky as shit to be in that position. So what should I do? Make the decisions that I think are right. And if you do the right thing, then you wake up, you look at yourself in the mirror, you feel good about what you're doing, you go to bed. And by the way, I do so many things for people, but you can't make everybody happy. You right. can't respond to important. everyone who's hitting you up and you know you have thousands of people dead. How do you know when to so, draw the line when you're like, my you, time is valuable, I can't do this? So I have today, my life has got to, I legitimately work and people don't, like people see the fun side of me because what do you see on Instagram? You see me at the Grammys this weekend, mm -hmm. okay? But at the Grammys, you know that in my head, I knew everyone I saw, like what were the things I had to help them with, or I want to learn from them, or you know, things that we I thought we could do good together. Like that's the way my brain thinks. I'm out, my head's programmed out. Okay. Like I walk in each thing that I do saying, you know, here are the things I need to follow up on. Somebody they asked me to do. Here, you know, by the way, I want to connect these two people because like at this lunch I'm doing on Friday, I know 20 people want to do things with each other. I want to make sure that I pair people together, you know, because that's just the way my brain thinks. So like you just you try to do the best you can do. Like I got a big organization. We have 
five full-time assistants for me um, who work, these guys work 24 seven. I have a chief of staff, these guys hustle, you know, multiple people are just hosting people things, but you just, you do the best you can do. Have you ever done psychedelics? Uh, here I don't know if I can ask that question. Yeah, or not. you can ask me anything. I don't give a shit. No, I haven't. I'm actually my body does not respond well to that. I mean, obviously, like I drink a fair amount. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a guy's guy. I'm not, I actually don't like alcohol, but I'm a guy's guy. So I couldn't like in a personal setting, I never drink ever. No casuals. There's no casuals. But like when I go, yeah. I'm all in. So like oh, when you all, drink, you drink. Yeah, I'm all in. Like, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah, that. I've got the same problem. So, yeah. Fuck with that. So this is a story that 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 sounds preposterous. But at the white party last year, oh yeah, that's here. At the white party last year, we had 366 people. That's all. That's all that's there. Three hundred. Some of who was there? Everyone knows. It, it, it was. It was it all was, over. Yeah, it was it's all girl. over there. Yeah, oh, three hundred sixty-six people. Fucking, yeah, uh, yeah all, any of all my friends were there. Um, three hundred sixty-six <laughs> people. How many bottles of tequila do you think we went through? Because this was account mathematically confirmed. Three hundred sixty-five people. Fuck. Three sixty-six. A couple thousand. We went through 600 bottles of tequila yeah, over 11 hours. Yeah. 600 bottles. And that was just tequila, by the way. Now, I know Trav, I think he poured like 25 on the stage by accident. It, <laughs> yeah, it, I was going to say, those yeah. guys probably just- But it was, it, 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 it was crazy. So yeah, I'm a, when I go in, I go in. I'm committed. When I commit, I commit. I love That's that. That's crazy. Damn. I'm just kind of curious with, uh, with Fanatics and, and that, um, all these relationships. Do you have a relationship with Adam Silver and Roger Goodell? Yeah, of course. But like, are you guys boys? Like, how does that work? Because you're yeah, so important so, to them right, too. I talked to, I talked to Roger two hours ago this morning, and Adam, I talk to every week. Like I mean, casual talks. Yeah, of course. I mean, these guys are my, my most important business partners. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, and it, look, look, I'll tell you something. You have to learn from different people, right? So I'm always learning from people. So I'll tell you. You asked me who my number one mentor was. I said it was probably. Robert Kraft, Robert mm -hmm. John the Kraft. But I would say the biggest thing that I've learned from Robert early on was the diversity of people around him. And that's what made him so special. And how could Robert beat Baby and Meek, who's become really good friends of through me, but then he's dealing with, you know, the most serious political leaders, business leaders. And I've, I think in a lot of ways, that's what makes me pretty unique. Like, you know, I love, you know, spending time with Adam and Roger. Diversity. At the same time, I love spending time with, you know, Baby and Meek or Trav, who are all really good friends of mine. So think about Travis. I mean, this guy has become, think about how lucky I am to consider Travis a brother to me. This guy's become, in my mind, the number one most relevant cultural person for product vision in the world, okay? Virgil's not with us anymore, unfortunately. Okay. Um, you know, you think about, I mean, Trav, anything he touches is incredible. Okay. What he's done with Nike, yeah. what he's done with Dior, what he did, did with, I forget what it was, McDonald's or Burger King, it was incredible. This guy is literally, I've never seen a guy who's more of a product genius than Travis Scott. Yet I get to learn from the guy. Okay. He calls me all the time and says, Yo, Rube, let me show you this. He shows me the shit he's designing and how he's designing it, okay? And I'm like, man, I'm humbled by that because he's making me better. He's making fanatics better. And by the way, and we're going to do stuff together too, which is great. And by the way, I didn't seek out to meet Travis. By the way, he, I didn't even know he was good at product when I met him. I met him because he, he was, James Harden is one of his best friends and we hung out together. And then one day he said, hey, can you come by my crib? I went to his house and I literally, I never took him seriously. And then I went to his house and he's telling me all these things he's doing. And he's showing me project after project after project after project. I left him, holy shit, this guy is a product genius. And now I realize, like, by the way, I happen to sell six and a half billion dollars of merchandise this year. I'm gonna sell a few billion dollars of trading cards. Travis is a product genius. There's nobody better in the world for connecting, you know, product vision and culture than Travis Scott. And he's my boy. Like, yeah, it's amazing. I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying these things all come authentically. But yeah. you know, how did I meet him? Through James Harden. It became my like a brother to me five or six years ago. Yeah. How do you make sure relationships like that don't get soured by like business deals and stuff like that? That is a great fucking question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was just having a conversation about that uh, last night. So I think for me, knowing that I'm in a pretty fortunate position, I always want to make sure anytime I do something with a friend that I'm, I am pretty damn sure it's going to work for them first, me second. Because if not, you're dead, okay? And so I'll give you an example. When we bought 
Mitchell Ness. Okay. We bought Mitchell Ness a um, little less than a year ago. And um, they ran a sale process to sell it. And actually, the way it came about, the true story of how Mitchell Ness came about is Jay Z said to me a couple years earlier, like, like, like Michael, we should buy a licensed headwear and apparel company. Like, let's some, find something to buy together. So it was in my head. Then he called me and he said, hey, you know, Pron and Mav are thinking about buying this. Maybe we should all do it together. Like, you know, you own Fanatics, you own the NBA store, and I'll shop, you own Lids. You know, you have so many points to help make this successful, but we can understand how to make this better. So I said, hey guys, why don't I drive? And we negotiated what I thought was a really good deal to buy the company. And then I actually had Fanatics lend Mitchell Ness some money to make the equity check that went in even smaller. And to put this in perspective, the people we, we brought in, brought it, bought in at about two times profit, okay? Now, anyone who understands anything about business, that's probably 90% cheaper than a lot of those things would be. Yeah. Because I want to make sure the deal would be great for them. Once I knew that the deal should be great for them, you know, not only did we do it with Jay and Brian, who is kind of originally kind of came to me with the idea of Jay really early on and then, and then Brian and Mav, um, but then we brought in so many other people that became our partners because I knew it would be a home run. And by the way, Anyone who put a dollar in got 12% of the money back in the first year already. They invested one year ago, yeah. they've already got 12% of the money back. And then that could is. So I won't do a deal with someone if I don't think it's going to be great. I have no problem risking my own money. I don't want to risk my friend's money. So when I put my boys into stuff, I put it through a huge filter, much better than my own filter. I'm not always going to be right. It's just going to get fucked up from time to time. Yeah. Um, you know, lids that we do with partners, like I'm not afraid to, to share this. Like, you know, lids, um, I had a lot of my friends were investors in it. That's paid back. Like it's the best deal we've ever done. So we've had many failures. This is the best one. So I'm giving you the best examples. Like yeah. someone only talked about the good day in the casino. Yeah. Okay. It's been a 60 Xer, you know? Holy shit. You know, me put in money, me, wow. you know, he was, and he was, you know, got somebody out earlier, you know, like 40 times his money. So wow. like, I Lids love is that. a crazy one. Like this is a crazy one. I've been, I'm from Canada. I'm from Toronto, but yeah, just, I've been shopping at lids for fucking yeah. my whole life. A kid. Like, right. Yeah. That's a and, crazy one. It, and, and so, um, I, the answer is, I'm always very careful to make sure anything I do with my friends that I feel really good that's going to work out. And if not, do not do it because life is long. You don't want people pissed off at you. And by the way, when you talk about some of these influential people, the last thing that you want is a pissed off influential person at you. Okay, let's <laughs> yeah. keep it real. You don't want someone coming at you like that. So you got to have a good filter. It's interesting. You said life is long and not short. Oh, uh, look, really I've been at this for 50 years. I've been, I guess I've been, my brain's worked for maybe 47 of those 50. <laughs> where I could, I'm not sure it works now, but um, you know, like, look, I'm going to do this till I die. Hopefully, yeah. I, hopefully I live till 90 or a hundred. So um, like nonstop working, you think? Yeah. I, I, I understand that for real. And, I'll, and by the way, let me tell you what's going to happen. If I stop, I'll be dead. I believe you. Like I'm like a shark. Like, I, I believe gotta, you. I got I to gotta, I gotta swim and eat. Is it what makes you feel good? Makes you feel like purposeful? Obviously. Yeah, for sure. Cause what else like, what else am I good at? Like, you know, <laughs> like I'm good. I'm pretty decent at business. So I like that. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I love, you know, be, being with my family and, you know, with Camille and Kylie and the, the babies, but like, yeah, like, you know, this is what works. Like that's what drives me. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. This has been awesome. What's, what's up with the, uh, the collectible stuff, like the memorabilia you think I always look at it cause it's like such a hot and cold market, right? It seems like it with digital stuff coming up and about. You think it's really like there's that much upside? I think the collectible space has enormous upside for the most obvious reasons. So we got into this two years ago. We now have the collectible rights to not only tops that we own today, which has baseball, NF1, and Bundesliga, and UEFA. We have all the rights coming on from the NFL, the NBA, NCAA, uh, WWE, UFC. So we have a, you know, all these trading cards. Dude, and here's the craziest thing. This business has never been marketed. There's never been any marketing in this business, okay? There's never been any more product innovation. I'm telling you right now, to every collector out there, the 12 month cycle we're in right now, we will do more for this industry that's been done in the last 70 years. And by the way, I'm not arrogant, I'm pretty humble. We will do more this year than what's been done in the last seven years. We are going to aggressively market this industry. We are going yeah. to aggressively innovate this industry. We got so much great shit coming like I am so bullish on it because this business is done great by accident. And by the way, if you plan a business to be lucky, you're dead long term. I don't plan on luck. I plan on like like good strategy, hard work. You know, getting everyone behind it. Yeah, you got, you're just you're just starting to do the live streaming of the opening of these things, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, How we're going to watch that, that later this year. I think it's really important. I think it's a new format. I think the format's really important. Look, I think what, like, one of the reasons I'm doing stuff like this, like, I learned so much, like, I'm going to watch what you got. I'm going to, like, now pay attention. Like, from this conversation today, I'm not going to pay attention to you guys. I'm going to learn from all of you guys. That's going to make us better at what we do. Like, that's the way my brain works. So, like, I'm always learning. Like, one of the things Fanatics actually has the biggest opportunity on today is kind of, like, natural social media. It's yeah. not been a place we've been strong. But like with all the content that's around us, how are we not great at that? Okay. Yeah, facts. And so it's something like I want to learn about. And it's, we got to be younger. We got to be better. It's like, why am I excited that the CEO TikToks at my lunch on, on, on Friday and at my party on Saturday? Because I'm going to learn from him about how to, you know, yeah. we're not good on TikTok. But by the way, the D'Amelios are all family to us. Just saw yeah. Mark D'Amelio last night. Charlie, Dixie, Heidi, Mark, they're all like family to us. So it's like, we all got to learn from each other. I saw you guys at the weekend concert. So yeah, recently, we, had, yeah. we had fun. Abel's yeah. great, dude. By the way, yeah. talk about beast. That guy's a yeah. beast. Yeah, sold that stadium out five nights to run. Insane. insane. I had no idea. It's funny. I, I always knew him a little bit. You know, not one of my, you know, I always knew him, not, not someone I know really well. Um, I had no idea. And 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 uh, Cash kept saying, you know, come to the concert, come to the yeah. concert. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, Cash and Abel have done this together. And um, I got there and I'm like, I didn't even, didn't even strike me like, wait, I'm going to, you know, SoFi, not like to to crypto. And, uh, you know, to the, the arena, I'm going to the right. stadium. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're doing this five nights. I'm like, what? Five nights? Completely sold That out. is fucking nuts. Yeah. That Wait, is nuts. The weekend did five nights a- in a Able. row? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, Able's of the, a beast. Yeah. One Holy of the things shit. got canceled, they sold it out again, and then they came back and did the show. Yeah. He f- completely sold out. This guy's insane, man. Insane. Got a lot of respect for that. Yeah. Crazy. That's a different, I mean, I guess you got to be a little you, crazy to do this uh, stuff. Do you watch anybody specific or like, are you scrolling TikTok ever? Like watching. So I this is just, a good question. That's a funny question. So I just went on TikTok a few months ago. I've not learned. I've like, it, I haven't got it yet. Like I need to, like, I'm not like, I think I need, I think I need to hang with Charlie and Dixie for the day and have them like, like teach me TikTok. You're going to be on it a bunch now. I've seen this. you on there but, for sure. But, but, yeah. I've, but I've, but I've been on it, but I've never, like, I have my own account. Yeah. But I just like, I just like, I like, I'm not like Instagram is my voice. Like I like to make fun of myself. Like when I went in the cold plunge and like freaked out like a little bitch. Like I made fun of myself when I was trying to climb up the top to see, you know, if we could build a roof here. Um, like, of course, I like to make fun of myself. I haven't like I need to start doing stuff that's better on TikTok, but I don't spend a lot of time. Like I just kind of whatever we catch naturally that then, you know, then, TikTok's a crazy one. Yeah. Yeah. The way not, see it, I need yeah. to learn TikTok. Like I like that should be my goal in 23 is to actually learn TikTok because how great will that be for fanatics? Like if I could actually, you know, be great on TikTok for fanatics, that would actually help us expand our collectibles business and our yeah. betting business and our merchandise business. So I have to do that. TikTok's yeah. crazy too, because even if you don't have your own account, like people are just posting, like this will get clipped up by over, accounts yeah. that we don't even own, right? Yeah, I saw so it it's like, my white party. I saw, yeah. I, I remember like someone showed me like a week later, like this is insane. All over TikTok. Yeah. Type shit, yeah. And it's not even really a bad thing because it's like the first it's time great. we're like, That's what, that, that, steal my content. Sure, like it's more exposure, yeah, more Yeah, back eyeballs. in the day, it used to be like, don't take my content. Yeah, no, no, like no, on you YouTube, want, if you someone re-uploads. Everywhere. Yeah, on YouTube, if someone re-uploads you, you like flag it and be like, yo, that's my shit. But TikTok, it's like, Fuck it. Yeah, Go I want, for I want, it. I want everything going everywhere. That's how we build a brand. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And it also like it reaches down to the younger generation, the younger audience as well to continue like harbor that sort of fan base yeah. too. And we got to look, one of the things is hard. Like I act like a kid, but I got to remember I am 50. So, which is kind of crazy because I don't like, I don't feel 50. I don't think I look 50, but like I got to keep thinking young. Yeah. yeah okay. Because that's how you keep, otherwise, you know what you do? You become a dinosaur and die. Okay, yeah. I don't want to become a dinosaur and die. Fuck that. That's not interesting. Robert, how old is Robert? 82? He'll be 82 in June. And by the way, that guy has the heart of a freaking lion. <laughs> does, he, does he like party with you? Robert came out Friday night. Uh, my boy Drew and Alex from the Chainsmokers had a, uh, they had a party for uh, the tequila company for Jaja. And um, Robert said, hey, let's stop by. I mean, <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning, he was still going. <laughs> That's oh, shots of, shit. shots of tequila. I keep getting handed shots. Savage. I keep getting hand, handed shots. I'm like, Robert, I got I, I, I to keep going. Shot o'clock. Let's go. That's hilarious. Whoa, dude. Yeah. Him calling Singing you next- along to Closer by the Chainsmokers. Shot o'clock. Shot o'clock. Yeah. Shot o'clock. <laughs> Let's go. What? Yeah, that's wild. That's, that's, that's good, crazy. though. It's amazing. Yeah. We got to get you in the cold plunge. Yeah. I got to do the cold okay. plunch. Fuck. Yeah, it's, we this have is to amazing, it. Michael. Yeah, we Michael, cannot... we appreciate it, man. Yeah, you're, it's just yeah. it's sick to sit down with people like you, man, because uh, it's it, inspiring it, it, for us as young entrepreneurs. Probably, I've been hearing about you guys forever. Awesome. Congrats on what you guys have done. It's, <laughs> appreciate it's, it's, it. It's amazing. I'm fired up now too, so I'm ready to keep crushing now. After that, yeah. and now I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to watch you guys keep killing it. Sweet. Thanks, I know bro. you guys are crushing, so it's amazing. Congrats and Brad was asking before you got here. We we understand. No, he, I wasn't asking anything. Well, that's who's coming to the Super Bowl, by the way. 
I mean, we need We're going. at least two. For the party, I got all three of you. By the way, I'm saying yes. no to everybody. I want you guys at the party having a blast. Okay. Awesome. The party's going to be sick. I'll be there. Let's go. Okay. Can't wait. So we got, you, yeah. you, we got you all lined up. Let's do it. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate Michael it. Michael Rubin, thank you so much. Let's go. Appreciate you, man. Gosh, you did crush it. Absolutely. You're going to the Those shoes are fucking. Yeah. I'll get you guys bathing suits. Hold on. Ronnie, yeah. we need bathing suits for these guys.